Flux and Faraday's Law. I know a lot of people, when you see this, you might be thinking like, like this t-shirt, what the flux? I like how they put, uh, do you know that what that movie is from? Actually, that's from a movie that I loved as a kid. It's called Back to the Future. So good. Uh, perfect movie for me as a kiddo, that's for sure. But anyway, they had this thing. It's a... Uh, uh, stars Michael J. Fox is about a time traveling uh, car basically and the thing that made it work they made it sound really fancy they call it the flux capacitor so that sounds very sciencey right and in this chapter actually we're going to talk about flux so it's going to be kind of related but not at all we don't go back in time but uh, yeah what the flux indeed so let's talk about flux what it is it's a little bit abstract because we have an equation for it and it goes like this this is in your data booklet so you don't have to memorize it, it goes like this it's this phi here equals b a and it goes cos theta and this right here is the equation that's it that's all you need there you go so what does this really mean uh first of all this phi here that's the flux so that is what this is right here that's this we call this the flux what is it really it's related to the magnetic field strength now remember what magnetic field strength is measured in it's measured in teslas uh, the area, now this is going to be some sort of surface here. It's going to be some sort of surface here that's being hit. And maybe actually I'll draw it like this. So what I'd like to do is show you that you have a surface. In this case, it's this nice, easy, I'm trying to, I'm trying to draw a square, but that's in uh, sort of in perspective in 3D here. So I'm attempting to draw like, I don't know, like, you know, a piece of paper, right? So you have a piece of paper. And so you have some lines that are sort of crossing it. And if those lines are sort of crossing this piece of paper, then we're going to call this flux is going to be related to the surface that these lines are hitting. So the flux themselves, those are basically these lines. Okay, so these are going to be these, the flux is this weird quantity, but it's related to these lines that are hitting this, these magnetic field lines. So in this case right here, if I've got magnetic field lines going, oh, I don't know, uh, like maybe they're sort of crossing it like this maybe like that what this really means is that you know i've got some magnetic field lines that are sort of well actually maybe i shouldn't draw it like that that's gonna look confusing maybe i'll draw it from only half so i'll do it from the halfway mark like this maybe like that so can you imagine then this is a magnetic field line that sort of hit it from behind i just wanted to make sure you sort of got the idea of the perspective here you try to imagine this thing you're going across i'm probably drawing it poorly but something like that you can see it's sort of behind this thing now it's coming out and we consider this right here, this will be a magnetic field line. Okay, this will be B. This will be a magnetic field line. So in this case right here, maybe it's going that way. And what we're going to do is we're going to define this area of this surface. So that's why this area is going to be like a regular surface area. It's going to be, you know, meters times meters or whatever. It'll be meters squared. And theta is going to be the angle between B and A. Now, most people just think, oh, it's the angle between the surface and um, those magnetic field lines. But nope, I could not stress this enough. I've seen a bunch of times where they ask you for this. Okay, this is really important. Okay, make sure you know this. Make sure you know this. Have I made this obvious enough? So it's the normal to A. So that means uh, that's this angle right here, theta. Because what I've seen them do on exam questions to be sneaky, sneaky, because you think they can't really ask you much here, except for what's the flux, see, what the flux, uh, given B, A, and a theta. So the way they can be a little bit sneaky is they'll give you the angle, but based on not the surface, let's just say it was like, let's say it's flat like this. Here. This is the surface, and we're seeing it from the side this time. What if they give you the angle like from here? They give you, this is the theta right here. That's the theta, you know, for this B line. Like this is, ah, I use B, A, cos theta, right? Nope. You're supposed to define the angle from the normal. It's this one, not that one, not that garbage. Okay, so even if they give this to you, you can change it by then making it a sine. So if they're being really, really sneaky, then make it be a sine theta, and then it's like, nice try, IB. I know how to solve this. Okay, so remember, it's from the normal. All right, that's about all we need. We just need to sort of define this. Because now comes one of my favorite definitions. It sounds really complicated, but it's from Faraday's law. Uh, named after Michael Faraday, who did a lot of work on uh, fields, for sure. So this is one of my favorite sentences. And I got to say, this is true. Uh, my own students in class, if I ever saw them like in the hallway, I would often just ask them, quick, what's Faraday's law? Because I think it's one of the nerdiest sentences, isn't it? And I love uh, nerdy sentences, right? I'm a nerd. So here we go. And I don't mean nerd in a pejorative. I mean it in a form of endearment. So the induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Isn't that awesome? 
That just sounds so nerdy, isn't it? You know, someone says, like, instead of talk dirty to me, no, talk nerdy to me, here you go. The induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. You might be thinking again, <laughs> what the flux? How do I do this? Uh, this, e this definition, which you could easily be asked on an exam, is related literally to the equation. So watch carefully. You get this equation on your data book, okay? It goes E. This, by the way, is the induced EMF. This is going to be a voltage, as people like to call it. Okay, so this epsilon here, that's measured in volts. EMF is not a force in newtons. EMF is in volts. So the EMF equals, it's actually this. Uh, wait, let's just see here. What does it mean to be proportional to? It means equal to some constant times. And a rate of change, if you think about that carefully, that's how something changes with time. So that's why it's going to have this d phi dt. And we're going to put an n here. And this is going to be the equation. I'm going to explain it in detail. You're going to see this equation will make perfect sense in just a second. First of all, this d phi dt here, this delta phi delta t, this is your rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. That's what this actually is here. This is how your flux linkage is changing. And then you have, of course, when I say it's proportional to, see that just means EMF is equal to some number times d phi dt here. That's what proportional means. The negative, it turns out, that's to uh, talk about Lenz's law, which we'll do in another video. It just tells you that the EMF is going to uh, oppose the motion, so that's why it has opposite. So th basically, this equation tells you everything. This equation tells you Faraday's law because it's EMF is proportional to this d phi dt, and it uh, tells you Lenz's law because it's the negative here and just the number of turns in a coil. So what does this mean? First of all, the important thing is this. Moving magnetic field lines, those induce a potential difference. That's the quote-unquote voltage. And this may not be clear at all, so that's what, what I'm going to try to explain is this. Imagine I have a magnet. Uh, let's just say, I don't know, my calculator is my magnet. It's got a north and a south. Around that magnet, there are magnetic field lines going around it. So if you imagine then you've got these magnetic field lines that you can draw, and they're hitting a surface like, oh, I don't know, my little drawing tablet like I'm using here, like this little thing right here that I used to draw. Whoops, I don't think you can see it very well. Like this little thing, for example, is what I'm using to draw it. Uh, so imagine then you've got these magnetic field lines that are hitting this surface. Remember, that's how we defined flux. Flux lines was these uh, places where these... Um, magnetic field lines are crossing your surface. That's your flux linkage. So if those field lines are crossing this object but not moving, you don't have an induced EMF. Nothing exciting happens. But if the field lines are moving, do you see it? That's where you have this d phi dt. That's where you have the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. What that means is those field lines that are around this thing, when they're moving or changing, that's when you have an induced EMF. So only when they're changing, they've got to be moving. So for example here, what I've drawn here, I've got a magnet, so north and a south. I've got a uh, piece of metal, maybe it's like a piece of iron, and it's just got some wire wrapped around it. We call that a solenoid, or some people call this an electromagnet. Uh, but there's no current in here. This is just attached to like a light bulb. And this is the case, for example, with my bike. So in Denmark, everybody rides bikes, uh, it seems. Um, this is actually what I have on my bike, right? So what happens is this. Um, I've got this here going on. So let's just draw the field lines around this thing. So if I want to draw the field lines around this, let's see. Field line, magnetic field is the direction a compass would point on north. And the north doesn't like north, so it goes away. So imagine I'm drawing this thing going like this. And another one going like this. I can draw my little arrows. And I can even draw one more just to make it sort of, whoa, I don't know what happened there. Actually, maybe I'll just leave it like this. So watch this carefully then. If this thing right here, watch, if it's, whoops, can, uh, oh, come on, man. There we go. So can you imagine then this thing right now, as it's close like this, can you see the field lines are crossing this object? So there's flux linkage. Do you see that? There's magnetic field lines that are crossing this. Nothing exciting will happen now, but watch on the screen. Watch. If I go like this, like, ah, I'm moving around like this. If I'm going, ah, I'm moving around. It looks uh, very dirty, maybe. It looks like it's doing something to it. But let's just say, so if it's moving around, no matter what it's doing, as long as it's moving, you will have an induced EMF because there's a rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. That's the key. So uh, that is the important part here. Now we also have an equation here for the induced, uh, for a moving wire in a magnetic field. We have an equation for that. It goes like this. Uh, let's see here. EMF is just equal to BVL, where this is just L here like this. So 
This right here is the equation you need for this. It's the induced EMF. Oops. So the induced EMF, what's that measured in? That's measured in volts. Magnetic field strength is measured in Teslas. Uh, speed of the wire, that would be meters per second. This would be like a wire that's moving around in a magnetic field. And this would be the length of the wire in meters. And just to show you how you could quantify this, uh, we have a plane and it's flying with a certain speed. So now we know V, right? We know V is 200. It has a wingspan of 30 meters. That'll be your length. And the Earth's magnetic field strength we'll say is, uh, so B we'll say is 10 to the negative five Teslas. That's actually what it is most of the places on Earth. What's the maximum potential difference it can generate across its wings? Again, you just have to use this equation. Just V, V, L, it's that easy. So this is your induced EMF, so you just put in your B, which is 10 times uh, to the negative five. We have times V, which is 200, and we have times 30. If you look at this right here, two times 30, that's six with, uh, let's see, that's six with three zeros. I do that times 10 to the minus five. So that ends up giving me an answer of, you can say six times 10 to the minus two, which you could say 0 0.06. I guess that's a better way to write it. Uh, volts. So this here is the maximum potential difference you could generate across the wings. So again, it's a nice, simple equation, right? It just says induced EMF is B times V times L. This really does happen, right? So this you can really generate, uh, yeah, a voltage across your wings, basically, if you're flying around, because there's a magnetic field. So as long as you're flying around in a magnetic field, this equation right here holds true. And again, just to reiterate, Faraday's law is awesome. It just tells you if you have a moving magnetic field, it's going to induce a uh, EMF, which is a voltage.